And now for something completely different. Yes, this is a Toyota Sienna. Yes, it is lifted. Yes, this has been my on again, off again daily driver for, shoot, four-ish years? No, more than that, probably like six years. And um, yeah, I'm, I'm moving on. Um, mostly just because uh, I've got my little gas saver daily driver the Civic Hybrid with a manual. And while I did use this to haul stuff and tow stuff, um, it doesn't have quite the oomph to do all of my towing needs. Um, having to tow my little sandbar van, if you haven't watched that episode where I kind of go through my photo sh uh, photo sh uh, blah, 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 photo booth build with that thing, um, then you're missing out, check it out. But um, this has a tow capacity of 3,500 pounds, which I absolutely do and did use, um, but with a trailer and the K-Van, that ends up being more like 4,000 pounds total. That's too much for this. So I ended up with a Suburban, um, which is great and, and it's fine. It's not as cool as this, but I can't justify having a Suburban and this. So unfortunately, um, off to greener pastures goes the, uh, the yoked minivan, the uh, madman dad van so um let's go around it real quick and uh see what there is to see um so it is indeed a sienna all-wheel drive 2004 234 thousand miles and counting and um yeah it's pretty well optioned out it's the xle limited which was the top of the line rhine for 2004 all-wheel drive and my understanding any of you hardcore Sienna heads out there, please feel free to correct me if I'm wrong. But being this is the earlier second gen uh, Sienna, which was the, uh, the first generation here to offer all-wheel drive, um, it has a true 50-50 uh, split front rear all-wheel drive system, kind of at all times, like a full-on a full full-time system. Um, which some of the later ones, the ones I think 2006 and later, did not have that. They had a more traditional economy-minded all-wheel drive system where it's front-wheel drive all the time, uh, right up until it detects some slip, and then at which point it just uh, it then sends power to the back wheels. No, no, this is a 50-50 split, and um, it actually does really well for what it is off-road. Um, I've never been traction limited in this vehicle. I've been clearance limited. Um, I did um, do a separate video um, with some off-roading in this. So if you're interested in how this thing does off-road, um, yes, the lifted minivan does and did and will go off-road, um, then check that out. Um, but the particulars are, as you can see here, BFG all-terrains tires. Uh, they're, the math works out to be about a 29 and a half inch. Um, these are factory style struts. Uh, in the front and uh, what they do is they use um, longer uh, brake hoses in this kit and they use uh, spacers up here there's a three and a half inch kit so you've got a three and a half inch spacer here and in the rear it's a three and a half inch um, drop uh, for the rear subframe so the whole rear subframe drops in the rear you've got strut um, the spacers here in the front and you've got these different um, sway bar end links to adjust for the uh, the difference in height. And uh, that's the meat and potatoes of the kit. There's some other bits and pieces. A, um, a custom uh, exhaust spacer extender that gets cut and welded in place in order to make all that work. But the end result with the taller tires and a three and a half inch kit, this kit is from Journeys Off-Road out of Arizona. They make kits for these, they make kits for Previas, they make kits for Mini Coopers, which is interesting. And they make kits for, um, I believe, the newer Siennas and, uh, you know, GMC Safari Chevy Astro Vans. So quite, a, uh, quite an interesting combo. Um, so that's the kit. That's what makes this van different than all the other minivans. And shoot, why the good people at uh, Cars and Bids would even want to run this thing. But... Uh, I'm going to click the key over so we don't get to hear it beeping. Otherwise, pretty it's pretty nice in here. One thing I do want to make mention, it does have this here broken door check, which is a common issue on these. 
Also a common issue that they did a TSB is the actual door shell where the check mounts cracks and breaks and the metal just stress, stress fractures. And that's what this one has done. So if you were to buy a new door check, um, that's not going to be the fix. It actually would need to have this reinforced and re-welded up in there or replace the whole door shell, which is what the TSB called for. Um, it did this probably a year into my ownership. It just clicked and made terrible noises before that. So it was on its way out. Um, I honestly, I don't really notice it. Um, I don't have a door check, but you know, so be it. Um, also common on these are cracks in the dash. A lot of them get really sticky and tacky and crack like this all over the dashboard. Thankfully, this just has it in the corner. So it's got the cracking here and it's not tacky at all. It, it feels it feels good. So there's some cracking there. There's a little bit of cracking here, but the rest of the dashboard looks good. Nice, presentable. Um, yeah, as far as options on this thing, and I'm just gonna start it because why not? As you can see, 234, 187 on a lifted minivan. Um, but yeah, options. This thing kind of has almost every option. The only option it doesn't have, to my understanding, is the upgraded stereo, which has the tragically unusable old out-of-date nav and the backup camera. The backup camera when I was doing the towing was very nice. I have an aftermarket cheapy one installed that kind of doesn't work anymore. The, the whole screen and everything is all tucked up under here behind this, um, but it doesn't really work anymore anyway. So um, that's really the only, the only options that it doesn't have. It's got the updated JBL system which has the tape cassette here. This one is Bluetooth. So I use this Bluetooth adapter, it actually works really well. Um, it does have, as you can see here, let me turn on cruise control. That right there is the distance sensor for the adaptive cruise. Yes, this had sonar adaptive cruise in 2004, which is pretty swanky. It does work. I don't really use cruise control, so I don't really use it, but it does indeed work. And just as it as it should, uh, power rear vents. Those work for the vent glass. Those open and they close. Sunroof. We've got a sunroof. It opens and it closes, just as it should. Um, the power doors. That's what these guys are. They don't work. Um, when I got this van, the other guy, he, the guy I got it from. They, he said they kind of had a mind on their own, of their own. They would open or they would close kind of at will, which is not good. Um, and so he actually just broke the cables himself. He said they were on their way out anyway, so he broke the cables. And so that's it. I don't really mind. They open manually just fine. So that's not a problem. Um, but you know, you do this and nothing happens. Um, also tied to that, and why I think he was having problems with it, is for whatever reason, a lot of times, and this is the dome light, um, like if I just leave the dome light on door, see the light over there? It just thinks, for whatever reason, so that's off, that's on door, and that's on on. So I don't, I don't know what that's about. It's done that since I owned it. Um, I just leave it on off, and I just don't really, if I need to turn the dome light on, dome light on, I push on. I don't leave it on door. Um, but it doesn't. It locks, unlocks fine. It doesn't give me any grief with regards to it thinking that a door is open. So I don't know. Maybe that's kind of symptomatic of whatever was going on with it. Um, otherwise, console and this does remove if you want to remove it. There's a little handle back here that would you would you would use. Um, Heated seats, they work wonderfully. Both front seats, they are heated. Air conditioning works great. Um, I have replaced the compressor. Uh, it failed on me once I had it. The previous owner had just the clutch replaced. Um, I was merging on the freeway one day, gave it full throttle and it smoked the clutch. So I replaced the AC compressor that was within the last 10,000 miles. I have the receipt, I'll dig it up. Um, the and it was charged at that point and one of the um one of the in inline valves was replaced what else um i mean that's most of it 
there's really nothing too crazy to report home. I've got some service records here. I've got a boatload more, uh, more service records at the house. Um, oh, I didn't show that the windows box work. Windows box. Uh, it does have auto down and auto up, up front. This guy goes down and up. And the side doors also go down and up as well. That guy goes back up. Um, Toyota stuff, you know, it all works. Uh, the power back rear does work. Um, let me see. Do I have to turn it on? There's a way to do this. Okay, I think that turns it on. No. It does work, I swear. Let me do it by the key, maybe. Hmm, okay. Well, yours and my mileage may vary. Um, let's see, I'm gonna try it one more time. Do I have to hold it longer? Ah, that's it. I didn't hold it long enough. I was being impatient. There it goes. As you can tell, considering I lit my way trying to just get it to work, I don't use this feature particularly often. Um, just like the power side doors, they just, you know, something I don't really use. And there it goes. Now it's on its way down. Um, let's take a walk around it real quick. Before it starts raining, because, well, that's about to happen here any moment. So, oh, also of note, yes, this is the driver's seat. The rest of the leather on, on the seats are great, that one included. Um, just, and even the back on this driver's seat is good. This seat bottom, no good. Um, I had a local upholsterer quote me about $350 uh, to redo this lower seat cover. Um, I was going to take them up on it, but I just, I don't drive it anymore. Um, and who knows, maybe the next guy just wants to put a cover over it. Um, I consider that too, but that is something. Power seats. Works as it should. That's all doing its thing. Fuel door. And it does have these cool weather tech mats. I picked these up shortly after I got it. Um, and they're great. Uh, they, they work really well. Um, it's kind of a pain to pull them up right now, but it's nice under there. I promise. Let's look under the hood, which has plenty of rock chips. Completely stock. Toyota Corporate V6, the 3MZ FE 3.3 liter. Runs wonderfully. Um, I replaced this battery pretty recently. Um, I don't see the date on it, but within the past year, um, it's an AGM battery, it's a really good one, um, and it just flat out works. In Under my tenureship, I've done the thermostat, I've done, I said the compressor, um, the, the AC compressor, which is down there. Um, that's kind of it under here. Timing belt was done shortly before I bought it. It was done right at time, on time at about 180. So, um, you know, it won't need anything for quite some time. You get this bad boy another 30,000 miles under its belt and you'll have to do another timing belt water pump. Um, you know, it's not leaking anything. It's good power, all of the things. Um, I did mention rock chips. There are some fairly significant rock chips on this hood. So, if you're really concerned about how pretty this thing is and looks, um, you're probably buying the wrong car, if I'm being honest. Um, clear coat on the top of the fenders are bad. Same all the way up on both roof rails on both right and left sides and the roof panel. Uh, clear coat issues up there. Plenty of scrapes and fading and stuff on the front bumper. There's a sensor for the um, sonar cruise, um, radar cruise. You do need to clean that bad boy off. It's a little muddy at the moment. Um, if it's dirty, it won't work. Faded on the top of the bumper here on this bumper cover. The back one's not nearly this faded out, um, but this front one is. It presents well. You know, if you want somebody coming up and really nitpicking your minivan this much, then I don't, I don't know what to tell you. Um, van is still very presentable, and honestly, people aren't going to be looking at that. They're going to be looking at the fact that it's got BFG all-terrains on it. 
There's plenty of small minor scratches and stuff. On this side, we have this running board. I was going to take it off, but I have left it just in case the next guy wants it. Same with the other one. The other one just has the guts. The outer cover is missing. Scratch here. There's a minor scuff with a crease here and a scruff, scuff here. Catch it in the right light, you can kind of see it. Let's use this no parking script on the ground to get a good view of that. There's this guy here. There's the broken cables I was talking about. But, you know, you just pull, slide it, not that big a deal. Back here, everything is nice. I love this feature. Now we have a table. Does have the factory DVD player. It kind of works. Um, if you get a DVD in there, you got to use a pair of tweezers to fish it out because the eject mechanism doesn't really work. And I don't have the remote for it. So working your way through the menu is an absolute chore. Um, let's face it, no one's ever going to use that anyways. Um, I used it once driving a bunch of buddies to a bachelor party. They put some inappropriate things on there. Um, that's the only time people have played with it to get it to work. Um, but yeah, all this stuff, these come in and out easily. Um, you can move this one to here, so you have it open in the middle, or you can have this be the bypass. The choice is yours. As I said, the clear coat up here is not great. That's the benefit of lifting, it makes it harder to even see up there. Back bumpers dinged up a little bit. Backup sensor front and rear, and they do all work. Um, it's got this big dent here. I did that. That wasn't me. Um, I, I might, you know, in prep for sale beyond this, I might heat this up and walk it back out. A heat gun will work wonders on these bumpers. It's not that bad though. It hasn't really bugged me. Minor uh, crack in the lens housing here. Let's open this guy up. That's what was making that noise when I was driving earlier. There we go. I'm running out of life of my GoPro here, so I'm not going to spend too much time back here. It does have an AC here for power, um, which is fun. And you turn that off with the, on and off with a switch up front. There's also one over here, you can kind of see, which is nice. As we saw, the power closed still works. That opened just fine. Uh, date codes on these tires. Um, they got a fair amount of tread on them. I rotated these off the front, so the front, uh, the edge is a little edge worn here, which is how these wear. Um, we have a date code of, should be like 2018-ish. Yeah, there we go. 23 of 18. So there's life left in those. As I did mention before, the cover for this step is missing. I think I still have it. If I do, and you want to try and finagle it back on there, you, you're welcome to. Um, I was planning on taking them off, but since I decided I'm selling it, maybe the next person, could that be you, will want them. Common Toyota thing. The black on these moldings has, has come off, really just on this side. They're just colored on the other side, but they're not as bad. Oh, one thing I just remembered. Trim panel on this side's got a little crack right there. That little piece is, is got a chunk missing out of it. Not the end of the world. I suppose I should really show what's under here. And guess what? That's pretty much it. It's really, really pretty, but it's also really about to start raining. So, um, instead of spending more time here, let's go ahead and see if we can drive before it starts raining and uh, get swampy. And uh, let's push this harder than uh, we probably should. All right, let's roll. Oakley doakley. Let's go for a ride in the lifted Toyota Sienna. Um, 
I'm going to push it down the same road I normally do, which um, is something that really I have no business doing. This is not a kind of a road for this kind of a vehicle. Um, I'm not going to hustle it too hard, but um, I'm going to push it enough that uh, you can get a sense on what uh, this thing does and how roadworthy it is. So without further ado. Clunking that comes out of the front suspension. Nearly every single front suspension component has been replaced, um, and steering rack and inner and outer tie rods. So I can't explain the clunking. But when you have a lifted minivan, Weird suspension stuff is just kind of part of the territory. I did just put a new rear diff mount in it um, that was making some noise, and the old the old one's completely blasted, so that's been replaced. So the rear end is nice and quiet. But it still handles as well as a lifted minivan could. Okay, so that is the lifted Toyota Sienna in a nutshell. Um, yeah, I mean, I've had this car quite some time. I've had this car, I don't know, roughly six years or so. And um, it's good. I got it just before, just over, you know, about 35-ish thousand miles ago. We're at 134 and change now. Um, and yeah, um, and most of that has been lifted. I probably over 25,000 miles of that has been with the lift kit on it. So if you want something different, if you want the ultimate um, car camping family hauler, if you want something that will turn heads in the weirdest of ways, then um, this is the vehicle for you. Um, no clue what this is going to do uh, at the close of auction. Um, if you have guesses, Go ahead and leave them in the comments. If you are seeing this video as it goes live, you're also seeing when the auction is going live. So jump in to the auction. A link to that will be in the comments below um, and uh, see what's going on there. Place a bid, bid up and bid early if you want something strange. And otherwise, uh, thanks for tagging along. Thanks for watching. Um, do all the like, subscribe, notification bell thing. Just do whatever you gotta do there. Um, as is YouTube, and um, yeah, what I got for you. Thanks, homies.